There we go. That's better. Okay. Here we are. You're all here. Welcome, everyone. Look at, you. Look at your faces. Look at you, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the uh, IPFS weekly call. Uh, it is here. It is this, this thing. You're here. It is the 9th of March. Uh, today, we have uh, Fission, who are going to talk about how, uh, how they are using IPFS and how they're integrating with Web2. He said Web2, that's the old web from where we're, we're standing. Uh, so um, that will be super interesting. I'm going to stop sharing now because I've got nothing else to show you. Um, but if you would like to take it away, Boris and Brooklyn, then please go ahead. Uh, round of applause for Boris and Brooklyn. Awesome. Uh, this is the talking head over here. Uh, Brooklyn, depending on where you are, has a lovely illustrated face. And we've got some other folks from uh, the Fission team on as well. Uh, Steven is dialing in from um, uh, Ghent, Belgium. Uh, Brooke and I are in the Vancouver area. We are a distributed team. Um, and now you should once again see a presentation. Yeah? Amazing. Thank you. Um, so yes, integrating into Web2. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of background and then get into kind of what we've built. Um, and we've been working really on explaining what we're doing in lots of different ways because God knows that interplanetary file system um, can often be hard to get started as a conversation. Um, so, uh, and please go ahead and ask questions along the way. Uh, I'll kind of roll and go relatively quickly. Uh, I am the non-technical hand waver. Uh, the rest of my team are engineers. Uh, I mean, theoretically I am as well, but I tend to just break things. Uh, that's what testing is for. Um, and, you know, love, thank you so much for having us and, and, and love to get feedback on, on what we're working on. So what if front end code was all you needed? Uh, because front end is really the part that humans interact with, it's not going to go away. Uh, browsers keep getting more powerful. We've got a bunch of what we're starting to call public infrastructure. So we see IPFS and the global and interplanetary network as being public infrastructure. Um, and then the other thing is sort of the rise of edge computing. Um, serverless kind of edge kind of portable compute. We use a couple of different words for this. Um, and, uh, and I think we're just starting to see this come into focus. Um, I mean, really all apps are hard, um, but in particular, uh, we've been building uh, LAMP stack apps for 30 years and you have to do a front end and you have to do a back end and fun times, you have to add a sprinkling of DevOps to make this stuff work. Um, and we have breaches all the time. Um, and, and we've got a really great sort of local development environment, but, uh, basically as soon as you get to deployment, other than, you know, local host colon 4,000, uh, as a developer, you immediately have to make like a million choices and learn a million things. No more FTP to the server, uh, as it used to be, as I stroke my long gray web 1.0 beard. Um, so we really think that what we can do is build web native apps. So Fission is building a framework for self-contained web native apps. We're still air quoting this because we're kind of, you know, what does that even mean? Um, we're also building a hosted services so that all of this stuff will just kind of work and support. Um, but all this stuff should run locally. Um, convenience features, deployment, it should just work. Um, user accounts with data privacy, passwordless login and authentication, app hosting, DNS, yes, Web2 DNS is kind of like a thing we still need to do. And then a lot of the built-in features of IPS, IPFS to give us those content delivery networks and access control and encryption. So, and we really think of that. Uh, <laughs> Brooke, can you maybe actually take on uh, uh, this slide and, and walk us through uh, this one and tell us what the dragon means? <laughs> uh, sure, yeah. So the overall idea here is making uh, web apps more like 
native desktop or mobile phone apps. Um, so uh, on the web, you have to go and upload, you know, files to every individual service and they end up as this, you know, uh, large target for personal information and, you know, all, all the problems associated with that on, say, iOS, you have your photos and you grant access to your photos to different, um, different applications. You have uh, storage and authentication and compute all in a single SDK. Um, so we're really just mirroring that onto, um, uh, onto the web using IPFS to make things location independent. Um, uh, using, you know, uh, cryptography to keep everything secure and keeping the keys in the user's hands rather than the app developer's hands. Um, just because Boris mentioned it, what's the dragon? It's, uh, LLVM It's just the, um, uh, the, the compiler uh, and, and uh, runtime infrastructure that's uh, used on uh, underneath iOS. Um, <clears throat> so we're leveraging, you know, both JavaScript, V8, Web, WebAssembly, and um, a bunch of web standards on top of IPFS um, to, to make that work um, and to also give nice um, uh, experiences with not having to worry about, it's not on this slide per se, but not have to worry about um, DevOps because now your production server, quote unquote, uh, is the network, which is um, provided by IPFS. Awesome. Um, I'm not going to totally go into this, but this is a diagram that Brooke has made in thinking about the kind of pieces of the stack. Uh, and there's a lot of words there. Um, Brooke's example always is you should be able to build an entire app while offline on a plane, create the first user account locally, and it's running, it's in production on your laptop. Um, and then you deploy by connecting and syncing to the rest of the network. The other constraint that we put on ourselves in deciding how to put these pieces together is that everything that we build and deploy and put into the hands of front end developers to build apps with should work in all browsers, including mobile, without plugins. So, you know, Alan and team, uh, JS IPFS, and some of the work being done there, definitely a key piece. Where, um, where we want to be injecting uh, a JS IPFS node into, into browsers and work with service workers um, to make a bunch of that stuff just work. Um, how many people in the call have heard of web auth n? Couple. So very brand new. So I, I won't, um, you know, we, we definitely are using things that are uh, kind of just getting out there. It is a standard. It is built into browsers and basically um, lets your browser hold private keys for you. And that's what can enable some things like um, passwordless login. Um, and we're uh, integrating all of this in the, the Fission uh, stack and, and SDK um, so that people can put this together and use it very easily rather than everybody having to kind of figure it out by themselves. And that's the big thing that we're doing is we're integrating all of this. Um, so what have we built? So far, um, we have built a web API. Um, so it's a RESTful API for IPFS, as you may have seen in various kind of pinning services. We very much don't think of ourselves as a pinning services. Uh, we think of ourselves more as app hosting um, in that we do a bunch of other things. Um, and that pinning is kind of the least interesting thing that, that gets done. We think that's gonna be pretty commodified and that people will be able to bring their own storage in, in different interesting ways. Um, the first thing we actually did was build a Heroku add-on. So that's in part for the, where the Web2 stuff is. Um, so we made a little um, add-on in the, in the Heroku marketplace um, that you can programmatically add to apps and do one-click deploys um, and get access to IPFS that way by connecting to our servers. Um, we've also built in DNS automation um, so we've done that directly where people through our service automatically get a subdomain um, and uh, you'll be able to bring your own domains and we'll probably enable um, domain purchases right from the command line as well. Um, and the other half that you typically interact with other than the, the Heroku add-on is with our CLI, which is kind of an all-in-one. Um, uh, 
you know, we, we originally integrated our web API into IPFS deploy um, just to work with the community on that. Um, and, uh, but all of that uh, um, work is really going over HTTP and we really wanna be using IPFS natively as much as possible. So we uh, get developers to install IPFS locally, um, download the, the Fission CLI tool, uh, sign up, log in, all that stuff can be done directly through the CLI and kind of the main command that you're gonna do is fission up and that just takes the current direct directory um, works with your local node, uh, uploads it to IPFS, uh, or rather puts it on IPFS, and then our server reaches out and pins the DAG, and we, we rely on IPFS to do that syncing. And I've just got a little video here. Let's see if it plays. Do, do, do. So we made an index.html, we grabbed a GIF from somewhere, we edited the index.html, we type in vision register, we've registered, type in vision watch, which is basically you can have your, and there you go. Um, so probably not something that this team hasn't had b b before, and we've really integrated this all in one, in one tool where uh, in this case, vision watch is actually running in the CLI, so if you're typing in your editor and you're live reloading um, and you've got Fission Watch running on that directory, um, it'll constantly be uploading your changes, um, uh, constantly changing the top level DAG uh, and constantly updating the uh, DNS link text record. Um, so you can be typing and developing and that stuff is, is running directly off of your, um, uh, your local development environment. Um, next up, uh, public and private key based accounts. Um, so this is really how we make, um, uh, accounts portable, uh, using cryptography, um, crypto as in cryptography, um, on our system, uh, accounts are going to be able to add apps. Apps can have domains. Uh, we've got this sort of single account system right now that we give you a subdomain for. Um, and this lets people add multiple apps. And so you'll have sort of app.fission.app that you can, you can add through one uh, account. Um, we are working on encryption. Uh, so right now, public files only. Um, web login, so web auth n, and then the uh, Fission file system. FFS, which we're probably not gonna probably use as an acronym. <laughs> um, did Daniel manage to join us? I don't think so. Brooke. Okay, sure. <laughs> uh, so uh, it, basically identity or the way we're using it, it's almost like a just below identity um, based very loosely on uh, DIDs and verifiable credentials. So uh, we generate a public private key pair directly on the client with a non-exportable uh, private key um, and then use the public key as identity um, for and that's uh, authentication for authorization so you now have a root account and you can delegate access to other accounts or to um, other because uh, this is then scoped to a single domain name. So you can go cross domain by um, signing essentially a certificate that says uh, another account, your account on the other domain has some subsets of your rights. So it might be they're allowed to write into my storage for the next 24 hours. So in a lot of ways, very similar to how things work with um, uh, OAuth and JWTs today, but in a totally decentralized manner. Um, based largely on Google's macaroons. Uh, we are currently using RSA because that's what's supported in uh, browsers for the, the widest variety of things. Um, but we have on the CLI, it's all being done with the Edwards curve. So uh, a more efficient, um, uh, um, newer version of cryptography. Yeah. Um. This one's you too, Brooke. Do you want to talk a little bit about your plans for the Fission file system? 
Uh, sure. I mean, uh, not not too much to um, uh, to see here beyond uh, you know today you can store public files, and we're making it so that you can do uh, private files. Uh, in a way where you can share subdirectories, again, in a totally decentralized way. So uh, each file in each directory uh, comes along with a header that contains a symmetric key um, for everything at its level. And then as we go up this tree, um, it's also including all of the keys below it. So every file, every directory has a unique key for it. And then if it contains other keys, that helps you go, go further down the tree. So now you can take some subtree and share that with somebody by sharing a key with them. Um, doing key rotation is pretty straightforward. We uh, rotate the keys on, um, uh, on index and then do new um, uh, key exchange uh, because we have these nice asymmetric keys, um, RSA keys or Edwards keys um kicking around so we can do key exchange for this symmetric key um to to view things so that's a read key and then a write key is uh authorization into uh our service to help them uh to allow them to pin uh, a new dag so lots of stuff going on we're um going to be documenting all of this and trying as much as possible to stick with with standards and other emerging things that are that are happening um, and our primary goal is kind of put this all together so that it just works, uh, because obviously there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, yeah, I, I mean, we're, we're talking a lot in sort of the, the details. The end result should be or will be an API that just says, you know, store privately, you know, this file, and then that'll be it. Yeah. Um, Vision Drive, go try it. Um, I will, uh, you, 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 can, uh, you can try it right now. Um, you're gonna see this uh, bowl of duck ramen. I'm sorry if there's any vegetarians, um, quite a bit, because it ended up being one of the, uh, the demo images that I use in, a lot. And this is me especially experimenting as I have for the last four months with our system using IPFS directly to share uh, and, and sync files. Um, this just got launched in what we call preview mode um, in February in our in our team retreat. Um, so basically, this is us building an app uh, on top of our own framework um, for early adopter end users and uh, obviously developers who are going to be using this. Um, one of the things I was thinking about as I explore with this is is once you've got portable files, um, how many in the call actually? I'd love to hear this. Use dot files to kind of uh, keep their development environments in sync. I'm like trying to get better. Um, uh, I feel like this is something that we can maybe help with. Um, so app data, um, the, the model is uh, each user will have one of these things controlled by a key. You'll get a convenience name like boris.fission.name and then per app storage. So just like you have on your phone today where you're saying you're giving photos access or uh, a gift maker access um, per app storage. Um, and then uh, uh, that's all happening client side. Um, works with any public IPFS files, private files and password list login coming. Um, here is a gorgeous screenshot of uh, image previews. Uh, yes, it works on mobile as well. Um, it's pretty zippy. Uh, that's one of the things that people tell us quite a bit. And we're obviously tinkering a lot with the interface. All of this was built by um, uh, uh, Stephen. Uh, Stephen, are you on the call? Yes. Do you want to just briefly talk about uh, what the heck is running on, uh, on, on, the, on the client side here? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, we built Fission Drive with Elm and Telwin CSS. We chose Elm mainly for uh, the great developer experience, the functional program aspect, and it also allows us to like quickly iterate on the app because it's really easy to refactor. And, and next to that, we have our get IPFS library, and we also use render media from the WebTorrent folks to stream media files. Yeah, so we're we're 
we're trying to showcase a bunch of things and make it really zippy. Um, you know, service workers, a bunch of other stuff in here as well. Um, and we look forward to, to releasing, releasing that as open source as well so that other people can see how we built it and, and hack on it. Um, I don't want to spend a bunch more time, so I'll zip through some of the rest of these things. Um, so Stephen mentioned get IPFS. Um, so this is like IPFS provider, but, and it was kind of built at around the same time. Um, in October, we met some of the IPFS lib P2P team and they told us about IPFS provider. Um, we're using ES6 syntax for this, um, and we'll maintain this and, and keep getting this working and see if we can merge IPFS or what that works, uh, but that's available in our GitHub. Um, we use Haskell on the back end. You heard Stephen mentioning Elm and functional programming. That would be Brooks wheelhouse. Uh, we use a lot of that. So we contributed a Haskell package that works either with local IPFS nodes or remote through HTTP interfaces. So that's how we use it, both as a web API and a local, local CLI. Um, we are, um, we're not doing any Go stuff in-house right now. So we ended up hiring a developer to add a feature to Go IPFS, um, IPFS Ignore. Um, so we thought it was very important for our users um, to not accidentally upload private files. So we implemented that in the CLI, but ideally we'd like that directly in IPFS. So there's a PR in progress and ideally, fingers crossed, um, I'll send links around to that if you wanna have a look and if anyone works directly on Go IPFS um, and uh, get that added upstream. So we wanna be part of uh, all of the open source communities we, we, we work with. Um, some other external stuff. Uh, so this is the web two stuff. Um, we basically think that there should be lots of ways to ingest files into IPFS. And once we get more files on the network, they can be reusable. Um, you know, obviously this group, um, this is not a surprise, but I really want to, uh, we find a lot of time explaining why, how and why this could be useful. And, uh, we think there's interesting things around sync. Um, you know, I'd love to have an interface where we have drive on the desktop, but you're managing your attachments in ghost or Drupal or discourse, and that's all reflected in a local desktop interface, um, and kind of make it available in, in, uh, in both directions. Um, you can try this as a, as a one click action. So I bundled together Heroku, um, the ghost blogging system and our IPFS adapter. So what this basically does is um, on Heroku, which doesn't have a file system, you're uploading your files, uh, your images typically, um, directly to IPFS. So um, this is then serving directly through our gateway um, and has two pieces. This is the little one-click deploy and then the, the, uh, um, the ghost storage adapter that we built as well. Um, we've done the same thing for discourse. This is running um, kind of in beta testing on our own talk forum right now. I would love to get this add-on into discuss.ipfs.io um, so that any files that are uploaded are automatically in IPFS. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, really show how this, uh, how this can work. Um, and that is my finishing my talking very quickly. Woo. Incredible. Thank you. That's super exciting. The, yeah, that was great. The, um, the, the developer experience that you just described there is, is really is something that I, I, I feel that IPFS really needs for application building on top of IPFS. And I, I, I'm just super excited to see this. Is, is there, are people actually using uh, like, has people built apps on this other than y yourselves yet? We, we, we've, we've got about, um, 200 accounts uh, on the system. Um, it's been used in some hackathons. Uh, people wander into our Discord. So um, some folks from Origin Protocol, um, which is a, a blockchain-based system, they were looking for a way to, to make their front end portable. Um, so really, like, fission up. That's it. There's no step two. Yeah. Um, that's just static front, front ends. We are only going to be pushing this more broadly, um, and that's really been our focus, when we get the building blocks of um, identity uh, and private files, and that's where things get really, really interesting. That, then we believe we've got a minimal stack um, where people can build completely client-side. 
Nice. Very right. Cool. So lots of experimentation. Um, and we're just ramping up now to be like, yes, use it, try it out, use these components works today. Nice. Love it. Um, we, uh, we have about two minutes left, so we've probably got Whoa. time for one question. Maybe, um, if anyone has any questions, do you want to shout it out now or we'll, I'll put it in the chat and we can quickly address one. Any questions? If people do have questions, can they contact you uh, async offline um, somewhere? Where's best all for of, people to get in touch? All of these ways. Um, so oh, that were on the slide, right? <laughs> first of all, uh, there is a link to a bunch of the screenshots and a PDF of the presentation that I gave that is in fact hosted on our own service. Um, and then the easy way to kind of talk to us directly is in our Discord chat. So fission.code slash discord gets us there. And then the uh, talk forum, which is our discourse forum uh, that I've just put in chat there as well. Um, we'd love feedback. We'd love collaborators. Uh, stuff we're doing on the front end is all AGPL. Um, we are doing a hosted service. We've got this crazy model. We're going to want to ask people to pay for services like with regular money. That's our plan right now. Um, um, uh, although we think there's some really interesting opportunities to work with our customers and possibly other hosting partners with Filecoin as well. Um, and, um, you know, would love feedback, collaborators, anything, come chat with us. Nice. Cool. All right. Thank you so much. Um, w one of the things I was going to say was how do I, how do I, how do you take my money? Cause that's, that's, <laughs> I really, I really want this and I'm, I'm really excited for it. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's, that's really cool. Thank you so much for coming today, both Brooklyn and Boris. Uh, and, uh, and thank you for presenting, um, about fishing. It's been really exciting and, um, we are pretty much out of time. So I'm going to, I'm going to end it here. Uh, <laughs> but please do get in touch with them if you're at all interested in, in it. It sounds super cool and exciting. So, um, great. All right. Thanks again for coming and thank you everyone else for coming and listening to uh, the presentation and we'll see you again next week for another exciting edition of IPFS weekly. <laughs> Bye everyone. Bye. Bye.